west. After weeks of nothing but north, a change of direction, albeit a temporary one. Heading out of Glacier, it was time to cross the Rockies one more time and head down to the coast. There are no major highways this close to the border. It's mostly two-lane state roads that weave their way around mountains and lakes. The fastest route would have been to get down to Interstate 90, one of the main arteries of the country, an unbroken stretch of asphalt between Seattle and Boston. And I'd get there, eventually. But first I stayed north, passing through small towns far from any city. The western side of Montana takes a bite out of northern Idaho, leaving just a thin sliver between it and Washington State. I wanted to see Bonner's Ferry, nestled in the Kootenanny River Valley between the towering Selkirk Mountains. Follow it north about 20 miles and you'll cross into Canada. I wanted to pass through here, not for Bonner's Ferry itself, but as the fictional setting for one of my favorite books. The town of Prohibition Creek from Neil Stephenson's Reemdy isn't a real place, but the area is. It's a weird hobby, but I love seeing the real world locations glamorized by fiction. Then it was down through Spokane, barely touching Interstate 90, before heading back northwest to the Grand Coulee Dam. And damn, is it a big dam. Built in the 1930s, it supplied power to several key shipyards in World War II, along with aluminum smelters and a little airplane manufacturer named Boeing. Oh, and a sizable chunk of the rest of the Pacific Northwest. Eventually, it also helped irrigate parts of the Columbia Basin. Sadly, no tours were available during my visit, so I continued towards Seattle. File that info about aluminum smelters away, though, because it's foreshadowing for a future video. But perhaps not in the way you might think. Heading southwest out of Grand Coulee was an unexpected gem. Washington State Road 155 follows the eastern edge of Banks Lake, but that's underselling it. It feels more like driving along the bottom of the Grand Canyon. Vertical walls of rock rise up on one side of the road, and on the other, the surface of the lake just a few feet away. It's stunning. So stunning, I was disappointed that the weather didn't allow for better videos. Or maybe the cloud cover, desaturating the colors, added to the epicness. Either way, what an amazing stretch of road. Then a quick but absolutely necessary stop in the town of George, Washington, to visit the man himself. For any non-American watching, our first president, George Washington, was not born here, nor did he die here, nor did he ever visit here. In fact, had you told him there was a town named after him and a state named after him, he would likely have been rather annoyed. The clouds eventually brought rain, something completely unheard of in Seattle, and as I finally reach the coast, part one of this adventure ends here. It's my dad! Arriving from New Hampshire, I picked up my dad at SeaTac and we spent the day in Seattle. Seeing the usual sights, drinking the local beverages, all on an unexpectedly gorgeous day. We even met up with my friend Brent, who recently moved here from LA. Then it was time to leave my little car behind and head out on my first flight since 2019. I even snuck my dad into the business class lounge. And by snuck, I mean he was my plus one thanks to a perk on my credit card. And then once again, it was time to head north way north. North to Alaska, if you will. Juneau, the capital, has two main streets, and amazingly, it isn't even the least populated state capital. Depending on how you count it, that award either goes to Pierre, South Dakota, or Montpelier, Vermont. Regardless, Juneau is a tiny town that is cut off from the rest of Alaska, all of North America really, by deep fjords and huge mountains. A short drive out of town, which is easy because the town just sort of ends, is the Mendenhall Glacier. Like nearly all glaciers in the world, this one is retreating. Dad was here in 2015, and even in that short of span, he noticed a clear difference. Then
The next day was our first of several adventures within an adventure. We took a boat. Nope, not that boat. Nope, this hardy little ship would take us all the way up Tracy Arm Fjord to the South Sawyer Glacier. It was an epic journey. At first, there was the novelty of tiny icebergs and bald eagles. Then the slightly alarming, but still cool, big icebergs. Then the exceedingly alarming mix of both clanging against the hull of our hopefully very rugged, but still very small boat. Uh, not the eagles. The ice was so thick it almost seemed like you could hop from one piece to another to get to shore. Eventually, moving at a slightly reassuring slow pace, we rounded the corner to see the glacier itself. A mesmerizing shade of faint blue and white, a stark contrast to the gray glacial waters. The whole bay filled with bobbling bergs of... Hey wait, is that a seal? Not just one, but several. These adorable sea doggos were just relaxing on the icebergs, taking in the sun. The captain shut off the engine, we were left with the sound of the water lapping against the hull, the occasional bonk of an iceberg hitting our hull, and a few times, the rushing sounds of the glacier calving off a chunk that would eventually find its way out to sea in one form or another. On the return trip, we found a herd of sea lions lounging on the rocks exposed by the tide. Seems like a pretty good life. This is just the beginning of part two of this adventure. More awaits, even further north. Stay tuned, and thanks for watching.